Hi, I'm Vicky of Bondatrix. I have a YouTube channel, Bondatrix, and I run a website, bondatrix.com, which I've been doing for 20 years, making BDSM gear in the UK and testing it all out and playing and having great fun on the BDSM scene. So today I want to answer the question, does BDSM have to be about sex? The short answer is no. I could just end the video there, but I'll give you a bit more of an explanation. So BDSM is often known as kinky sex. BDSM does often include sexual acts. BDSM does not have to include sex or even sexual acts or nudity. Everything is about what you and the person or people that you're playing with want and have negotiated beforehand. So it is entirely possible to build complete complex scenes or even long-term DS relationships that are all about BDSM that never have a sexual element to them. It's also completely fine to go the other way, that the only way that you ever do BDSM is in the bedroom or in a fetish club with your partner that always involves sex, orgasms, nudity, whatever aspects of that you want. Also, BDSM doesn't have to include the traditional penetrative sex to be sexual in nature. One of the fun things about BDSM, one of the things that's very freeing for a lot of people, is that it takes sex into this whole new level where it can include toys, it can include mental stimulation, it can include all kinds of other aspects. It can be about one person receiving everything while the other person doesn't. It can be about somebody giving pleasure to another person. It just breaks all the boundaries. It stops things just being one simple act in the bedroom that you know what's going to happen and you know how it goes suddenly there's this whole range of toys and activities and possibilities and options. So BDSM is always about what you and the person you're playing with want and have negotiated and decided before you begin. There should always be a decent negotiation which will include levels of nudity you're comfortable with, whether you want there to be any sexual acts, if you do, what type of acts are okay and which are not, and whether you want orgasms or whether orgasm denial is okay, whether edging is okay. They're all kind of things to negotiate before you begin the scene. They're all things that the dominant or the person in charge then needs to respect the conversation you've had beforehand. Even if things get heated and they get carried away in the moment, if something has been put on that no list by the submissive before you begin in the negotiation, before you start, it's not okay to break that during the play. Things should always be respected. The submissive should always be free to safe word if something is going too far, but if they've specifically listed something before you begin that they don't want, there shouldn't be any need for them to say word because as the dominant, it's your responsibility to listen carefully to that list and to remember it during the play, even if you get really carried away and you're really enjoying what you're doing. The biggest thing about BDSM is it's always about consent. And the submissive has to consent to things, otherwise you're not playing with BDSM, you're playing with abuse. So, how would it work if there isn't sex? I have a lot of people who assume that BDSM is all about sex and say, so what on earth would you do if there isn't sex involved? But a lot of BDSM activities have a huge amount of fun. It can be nice sensual play where the submissive will just find it a really relaxing, soothing, calming experience which might sound weird, like even if someone is tied up to you know, a St Andrew's cross, like the one behind me being spanked and flogged and caned and they're having all these interesting sensations all over their body, that might not be a sexual thing at all for them. 
but it might take them on this very relaxing, intense, interesting journey where they just feel all these sensations and it gives their brain time to just basically shut down from worrying about all the everyday stuff because you haven't got the processing power. Suddenly there's so much happening to you, your body is just focusing on the moment. It's helping you to live in the moment and to just experience what is going on and to just give in to that whole mixture of sensations. Equally for a submissive who enjoys bondage and sensory deprivation, it can be a chance to just get all of those external stimuli taken away from everyday life and just get into this situation where they can just relax. They're tied up, they can't do anything, they've got no responsibilities, they can't answer their phone. And it's just a chance to relax and let go from all the stresses of everyday life, particularly if they trust the dominant that they're playing with, who's tied them up and who's looking after them in that situation. A maid who's dressed up and been told to clean a house thoroughly from top to bottom for their mistress to make it all pretty and clean for them. It's a chance for them to escape into that role and just concentrate on what they're doing and to work hard at it. And again, for some people that can help them to just relax from the everyday world, to switch off from responsibilities, because right then what they need to do is make sure that the house is cleaned, how they've been told to do it to a standard that is good enough so that they won't get told off and punished. And that can help them to really just forget about everything else that's going on in their life right now and be really relaxing and enjoyable with that little hint of apprehension that they know they need to do a good job. And equally for the dominant, having that power and control over another human being and that responsibility to make sure that that person is okay and safe while they're in your care and your control and remembering the things that they're interested in and not interested in and what the rules are of the game that you're playing can be a very intense experience. So that can help the dominant to also forget about everyday life and all the other things they have to deal with because right now they just have to deal with this person that's in front of them. Whether they're spanking and flogging them, whether they're tying them up and putting them in a sleep sack, whether they're telling them how to serve them and to fetch them a nice cup of tea made exactly the right way to their requirements. It's a way to feel powerful and in control when maybe in real life you don't feel like that about things and it can be easy to get overwhelmed. It's a way to stop thinking about all of the other things that are going on in your life because right now you have to give full concentration to that person who is in a sleep sack and an isolation hood in front of you that can't move, that can't go and fetch themselves a drink, that can't do anything for themselves anymore and you're completely responsible for that human being and having that level of intense responsibility can feel very powerful and euphoric and be really interesting experience for you and a great position of trust and responsibility which can be very rewarding. So there's plenty of interesting ways to play with BDSM that for some people they can get huge amounts out of it without it being sexual. That doesn't mean that playing in a non-sexual way is better than playing in a sexual way. It doesn't mean that one of them is more of the right way to do it or not. It's just saying there are options out there, there are ways to do it. It can include whatever you and the person you're playing with want it to include don't feel that it has to include things of a sexual nature just because that's what you see in porn and that's what you might have seen on the internet and that's what you think it has to be about. It is about whatever you and the person that you're going to play with want it to be about. The dynamic between you can include all the things you want it to include and it doesn't have to include any things that you and your partner do not want it to include. And remember, most importantly, it's all about having fun in a safe, sane, consensual way. So do what the two of you or three or however many of you are will enjoy. 
Thank you for listening. I'm Vicky of Bundertrix. I have a whole YouTube channel, so subscribe, check out my other videos, and check out my website, bundertrix.com, if you're interested in looking for BDSM gear and outfits.